Hey, 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 uh, today I'm going to show you something, I guess, relatively cool. Uh, this is going to be me dual booting iOS 6 and iOS 9 on the same device, uh, i.e. my iPod Touch 5th generation. Now, this will be courtesy of a Cydia tweak or Cydia application or Cydia program by the name of Cool Booter, which is here. So, in order to obtain the Cydia program tweak app, what you want to do is go into Cydia, I really should have just taken screenshots because that would have saved me a whole lot of time in the editing process. Then once City is loaded up, which might take eons depending on your device, go to sources and add the source or repository http colon forward slash forward slash coolbooter.com. Coolbooter.com. If you don't know how to spell that, I genuinely don't know what to tell you. Once you add that, you're going to want to go into the repository. Uh, go to all packages or system doesn't really matter and then download the beta version of cool booter uh, The beta version has the best support the the best extent of support um, Because if you go with the uh, the you know the stable clients uh, You won't be able to do this on I believe the iPad 2 uh, and the iPod touch fifth generation um, But just for compatibility purposes download the beta. It's not unstable. It works just fine so I just go ahead and download the beta, which I did. Um, so let's go to the springboard now. And I'm going to be doing this in real time, as in I'm doing this for the first time right now. Um, so you'll observe this experience with me, which I think is the best way to experience things because doing it all by your lonesome is kind of depressing. Yeah. Okay, so when you open it, it asks you to back up your device with iTunes. I offloaded all of my locally stored music just so I wouldn't run into any storage uh, limitations. So I think I'm good for now. I don't need to really back it up. I just use this as a music player. And I don't need to really back up music since I can easily sync it with the drop of a hat or the click of a button. Isn't iTunes so convenient? It's actually not. A lot of people really don't like it, believe it or not. All right, install. Let's do, okay, so as you can see, you can either dual boot into iOS 6 or iOS 7 or any of the little minor updates for each of the two software versions. Um, are those subversions? I, I really don't, <laughs> subversion, that's, a, that's another word entirely. But, um, I'm just going to dual boot into 6.1.3 since it's the most stable, I mean, presumably the most stable uh, iteration of iOS 6 and, you know, iOS 6 is really, the firmware we want to see here rather than I mean iOS 7 it'd be interesting to do a boot into iOS 7 just to see how uh, the flat user interface evolved over the course of you know 2013 onward but for the for the purposes of this or for the purpose of this we'll just do 6.1.3 uh, let's do store okay let's allocate hmm yeah, let's, I don't know. I don't think I'm going to be doing anything too special with this partition. Um, let's do like four, four gigs. Uh, 6.1, yeah. Okay, I'm ready. This should take a while since it's going to, sure, that's cooler. Uh, yeah, jailbreak it, please. All right, so it's downloading. This should take approximately eight to nine minutes uh, I'm not completely sure uh, but it's downloading 6.13 from Apple this is amazing I'm like silently fangirling right here I mean this is I mean, this is cool <laughs> I remember I used to throw fits you know in in the form of several videos in the summer of 2013 over iOS 7 and its radical revision you know, designer vision and how I wasn't fond of the white user interface and this, that, and the other. Of course, it's grown on me because I was just, I was groaning, uh, bad plan words, over the fact that, you know, it was just, the, it was different, you know. Humans tend to not like change. And uh, of course, I was immaculately displaying that, you know, four years ago when iOS 7 was unveiled and I downloaded the betas. This is taking slightly longer than anticipated, but hey, not really want to complain. Um, it'd be nice to see if, it will be nice to see 
if there's a substantial speed increase or, you know, decrease of hang-ups and freezing and lag. I mean, theoretically, it should if the tenets of planned obsolescence, uh, I mean, materialize. Ugh, that was a pretentious sentence. Um, but we'll see. I mean, it, it's going to be less intensive. I mean, almost undoubtedly. Uh, I guess the question is, to what extent is it going to improve the performance? Uh, if it's, if not for the uh, degradation of the of the parts itself or themselves rather, like you know, what's what's the what's the ratio of software limit like software obsolescence and hardware obsolescence? You know, okay, so I finished downloading uh, the IPSW and now it's extracting the firmware. The download took about 20, 22 minutes, so not that bad. Uh, I mean. Based on my internet speed, it should take about seven to eight minutes. Um, but you know, Apple servers aren't exactly a hundred percent all of the time. So either that, or it was just because we were we were downloading a firmware that we weren't supposed to be downloading to begin with, and maybe you know the bypassing sort of uh, I guess throttled the download speed. Maybe I don't know. It's all just speculation. We're just. Uh, trying to buy time here all right it's partitioning now um, this would probably take less time on an iPhone 5 um, at least I'd presume all right now it's actually flashing 6.1.3 onto the system partition or the new one okay so I guess we could just ignore this because I mean I've virtually wiped my device clean okay now we can reboot that's the boot logo for my winterboard theme. It's not it's not a cool booter exclusive or anything. Alright, so slide to unlock. I mean, we're obviously still in iOS 9. So I guess we migrate back to the application. Now it boots. There we go. Okay, whatever you say, cool booter. All right, that was 10 seconds. Unlock. What? Oh, shit, okay. Also, uh, shout out to uh, Brian Langston, I believe his name is. Uh, he's one of my uh, subscribers, one of my uh, more loyal subscribers uh, who suggested that I do this because um, it was just recently updated or the beta was just recently updated to support the iPod Touch 5th generation because historically the iPod Touch 5th generation was one of the very few devices that was not supported by Cool Booter. Okay, there we go. Oh, wow. So thank you for, um, you know, suggesting this to me because this is cool all right united states oh man uh, sure oh man this is like when i was setting this thing up five years ago uh let's skip this step for now skip agree you siri don't send. Well, I don't know which one, whatever. Oh, wow. Oh, man. <laughs> and just to, I guess, prove, I mean, it's not really necessary, but yeah, we're on 6.1.3. That is wild. Oh, man. And as you can see, I mean, animations are smooth. So, I mean, yeah, degradation of hardware components doesn't seem to be much of a factor. Because it's running practically as smoothly as, I mean, it did from day one. <laughs> so, this is cool. There we go. I mean, this is, this overall as an experience is better than, you know, rocking this on iOS 9.0.2 or any iOS 9, you know, firmware or iOS 8 for that matter even iOS 7 had like a moderate drop down in performance just due to the uh, 
overhaul of the UI, which in the long run isn't really worth it if you have to sacrifice uh, a substantial amount of performance like you have to for this device. I don't know how to put it, but it's it's like the device was made for iOS 6. I mean, yeah, I mean, in theory it was because, I mean, it was released alongside, well, not, uh, yeah, alongside iOS 6, I mean, the official release. I mean, it's just, this looks right, you know what I mean? Oh, man, that weather app. <laughs> Only five-day forecast. But hey, I mean, good times, right? Let's go. I, I forgot to check the system partition, see how much space we have. Yeah, so we only have a few gigabytes, but that's that's fine. I don't really expect to do too much on this partition. And worse comes to worse, I can redo this and dedicate more of a partition or allocate a greater uh, ratio to this particular partition. Um, but I'm good for now. At least I have Cydia, that's cool too. So I can download all the iOS 6 compatible Cydia tweaks and, you know, screw around with those like good old times. Oh. This is super cool though. Props to the dev um, that made Cool Booter. Cause I mean, this is, it's really a throwback and a pleasant one. It's a throwback that like, doesn't make you think, ugh, wow, it's glad, I'm glad how far we've come. Because for a device of this caliber, which was never meant to be a powerhouse to begin with, running older firmware on it is preferable. I mean, you know, you don't, it's, it's, uh, I guess I'm just enamored with the flawless performance that I haven't really seen from this device for years now. I mean, look at this. It's hard to believe this device is five years old. I mean, you wouldn't think it just based on the performance alone. Planned obsolescence, guys. Planned obsolescence. Oh, man. Buttery. Look at that. 60 FPS. No dropped frames. That is... That's wild. So, yeah. I highly recommend you try this out, at least. If you have a jailbroken iOS device that has a 32-bit architecture. I mean, look at this. Let's change the wallpaper just for the heck of it. Uh, let's go to my favorite, the uh, grass. Yes. Oh, this was, oh man, look how quickly that was set up. It didn't take, it, oh man. Oh, I'm gushing here. Ah, oh, there we go. Oh, I love this. Oh man. Let's check out that app store. Uh, later. Uh, what's the rush, right? Oh man, look at that. Smooth scrolling. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> oh, look at those animations. Oh man. So yeah, seamless. Now, when you actually have to go back to the other firmware, which I mean, if you partition enough space to this uh, part of the dual booting system mechanism, or whatever, this is when the video falls apart, <laughs> then you really don't have to. But uh, since I, you know, wasn't really thinking ahead and only allocated three gigabytes to this partition, I'm going to have to boot back. It should be as simple as just simply rebooting the device, and then you're back into iOS 9, or whichever firmware you're on. And then from there, whenever you want to do a boot back into iOS 6, or 7, or 8, or whichever one you decide to do a boot into, you just relaunch the Cool Booter application, and then just boot back into it. There we go. We have the, uh, you know, the iOS 7 Plus uh, boot logo so you know we're booting back into the uh, original firmware and now we're back to present day well not present day more like 2015 uh, unlock uh, and here we go cool booter you know this is my other boot uh, let's go back in 
we can uninstall so if you make your partition too small and you want to make it larger it should be as simple as just tapping and uninstall if you want to boot back you just you know boot back so that's that's how you do it it's pretty easy to get ios 6 on your 32-bit uh, iphone ipod touch or ipad uh all you have to do is add that repo it's really self-explanatory uh, I just wanted to show you and more alert you to it if you didn't know that it was possible um, because it's it's cool it's really really cool it's something that a few years ago we would have you know we could only dream of it you know but now it's really accessible and it's a shame now that you know jailbreaking is sort of plateaued and it's sort starting to wane with the introduction of newer iOS releases. All right, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Um, stay tuned to the channel uh, for more videos. <laughs> he says as he laughs maniacally. Uh, yeah, you've just been Evil Ninja 99, and catch you in the next one.